Shalom Mishpika. Um, today is Feast of Trumpets, and I'm unable to blow the shofar uh, because I uh, I had surgery uh, about a week ago, so um, I have sutures uh, in, so I'm not able to do anything that puts any kind of strain uh, on the sutures or on the incision, so usually I'm the one that blows uh, the shofar every year. Um, my children, uh, tried to do it this year and had a really hard time doing it. We do have a small shofar that has a very small mouthpiece. Um, so, uh, but I ended up going on YouTube and finding some shofar blast sounds and I just played it really loud. Um, but next year, uh, I'll be able to, uh, blow the shofar. So, um, I'm always looking forward to the feast days, uh, but no one else seems to really be interested or ecstatic about it. Uh, I don't know if it's just because we don't have anyone else to celebrate with, um, you know, because it's always been uh, for the past eight plus years, it's always been just me and my children uh, keeping the feast days. Uh, so we're not usually around anyone else. Um, so maybe if we were around uh, other Hebrew families uh, with children, uh, you know, um, their age, uh, you know, maybe they would be more motivated and more inspired. Um, so just please keep all of us in prayer and, and my children as well. Um, I know it's hard to be... Um, it's hard to be, I guess, happy when you're in the situation like we're in, when you're living in the car and in and out of hotels and stuff like that. For other people, that may seem, you know, like a dream come true to be able to, to do that kind of stuff, but, you know, it really isn't. Um, I mean, if you have the money to travel around and be able to do that kind of stuff, where it's more of a vacation type thing, but when it's basically just how you live, it's, it's not, it's really not fun, but um, I felt yes uh, yesterday. I felt nauseated yesterday morning. Um, now my antibiotics causes uh, nausea. Uh, it can cause diarrhea. I've had a few tummy issues uh, the past couple of days, so it may be attributed to the antibiotics. I take the last bit tonight at midnight. Uh, appreciate you for that because. I'm so tired of taking it. I, I don't have a good, I'm not good with swallowing pills. Let's just put it that way. I'm really not good with swallowing pills uh, just because of my anxiety. And I've just always been that way. So the way I have to take the antibiotics is I have to take it in pudding. And so I open the capsule, pour it into the pudding, and then I eat it that way. So that might be also causing uh, a little bit of the nausea. Just my body is so tired of eating pudding every six hours you know, for the past week. So, I mean, that could be that as well. Um, but I did start feeling better later on uh, yesterday. Uh, so, and I ate some crackers and had some Sprite just to try to settle my stomach a little bit. And that seemed to help. Um, but yeah, I've got everything written down because I just I have so much going on in my head that I wanna talk about that when I, as soon as I sit down in front of the camera, it's like my mind just seems to um, seems to go blank, but yeah, I'm I'm also under a lot of stress, and that's definitely not something that I need to be under right now, uh, especially trying to recover uh, from major surgery because this was a major surgery. This was not a simple procedure where you get your ears pierced. This is a major surgery. I was literally cut in this area and then going down and then around okay so everything was opened up you know he, he dr rankin took out the implant along with the capsule he cleaned everything out you know he did the lift and all of that so it wasn't you know as simple as one two three and that's it no it, it takes a a surgeon who knows what he's doing who's been doing it for years who specializes in it uh and so this is, like I said, why I couldn't blow the shofar, why I can't 
you know, why they want you to have a stool softener because they don't want you to push when you're in the bathroom, that kind of thing. You don't want to do anything that causes any kind of strain. So I shouldn't be under stress either, but I am stressed because I'm not uh, recovered enough to drive the way that I did prior to surgery. Prior to surgery, I could drive all over town all day long, um, but I would still be tired. My joints would be hurting, dealing with breast implant illness. You know, so even though I could drive longer periods of time, uh, longer than 30 minutes, my body would just be wore out. Well, now this has to do with recovering from surgery. Uh, I couldn't, um, you know, my son had to help me yesterday uh, because, or not yesterday, but the day before yesterday, we went to the store um, and I was driving and he had to help take the wheel a few times to help me maneuver uh, the car uh, because my arms just uh, were not able to turn the wheel of the car like like usual like I had to do a sharp u-turn and that was really hard uh, because I can only I can only lift my arms so high right now and I'm supposed to um, gradually slowly over time uh, drive 15 to 20 minutes a day, um, you know, working myself back up to longer drive times. I'm also supposed to be taking it pretty slow on raising my arms over my head. So like with my right arm, I can raise it about this high and this is about as high as my left arm can go. I can't really, you know, lift my arm any higher than that. Uh, after a while though, if I move my arms too much, my shoulders, uh, hurt and, and things like that. So I have to take things slow. I still can't, um, I can't lift or carry anything that are more than five pounds. Now at the end of this week, I still have the weight restriction. Uh, and at the end, I think either at the end of this week or the end of next week, I can't lift anything above 10 pounds. So, you know, it's going to take me a, maybe two or three weeks to be able to really get behind the wheel of the car and drive the way uh, that I was before. Uh, so that is putting that stress on me uh, since checkout is tomorrow, where are we going to be? Where, where are we gonna be staying? I'm not recovered enough to be able to drive uh, to the nearest rest area. Uh, I'm not able to, to do that. So uh, if we have to check out tomorrow and if we're not in the hotel, uh, for another night or for a few nights or whatever, then we're just gonna sit in the parking lot if they'll let us because I, I can't really drive right now. Um, now for one, or no, for three nights uh, in the hotel that we're in, which is the Holiday Inn Express uh, on 45th Street uh, Metro Center, uh, for a week is about $643 and that uh, plus tax might be about 648 I think. Um, that's for a week. For three days is about $261 plus tax. I'm thinking that's uh, $267 and that gets us three nights here. Um, but so we just need a lot of help and I'm stressing about that just because, you know, I can't drive yet and I still have a lot of, re you know, recovering to do. So I feel like I feel a little rushed uh, and it's just stressing me out. Um, also, yesterday we changed uh, the paper tape uh, that's on my incisions. I have, I have them on both sides, around the nipple area, down my breast, and underneath my breast. And I was in the shower, had to try to get them a little wet. It was supposed to help make the tape easier to come off. No, it wasn't necessarily any easier to come off. And it was actually pretty painful. Uh, my son had to help me take the tape off because I just couldn't do it. It was so it was that painful, especially around the uh, the nipple and areola area, it was extremely painful. Um, this breast, when I got, when we got the tape off uh, the nipple, I had uh, a little bit of blood come up. It wasn't like bleeding or anything, but got it cleaned off with with gauze and got the tape back on. Okay, so we get over to the uh, to the right side, nipple area, 
and that had a little bit more blood. Now, again, it wasn't gushing blood. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, it's bleeding, but it was still a little bit more blood than this side. We just, you know, got it off with the, with the gauze and then just put the tape back on and, and it's fine. But, uh, and I have, but I have to do this every three days for three weeks. So that's causing me a little bit of stress as well because not only is it painful uh, to do that, but also thinking if we're not in the hotel and we're back in the car having to do that, you know, that, so I'm just stressed out all over the place with that. Um, oh yeah, uh, I also um, almost passed out yesterday. Uh, I was in the bathroom and we were getting ready to uh, check all the tape. And we were gonna start with the where the drains were, which are over here on, on these sides. I don't have the drains anymore, but um, it takes about three to five days, maybe seven for the uh, drainage wound to heal. And they're, they're almost healed. I'd say maybe, you know, three or four more days and it'll be closed on both sides. Um, but we were checking those. And so we got the tape off of this and the gauze and it was fine, it wasn't, you know, didn't look bad or anything. We put the gauze and the tape back on over here. So we started on to the right side. As I was getting the tape uh, off of um, this tape right here, when I was getting this tape, and as you can see, it's this little brown thin tape right here, okay? And when I was trying to, right when I was doing that, all of a sudden, my lips started to feel really numb, and my head felt super dizzy. And I had to tell my son, okay, you know, go get a towel, go get a towel, go get a towel. You know, because, you know, I need to go lay down, you know, uh, you know, on the bed. And uh, so I laid on, uh, put the towel, like I said, you know, because I was getting ready to take a shower. And uh, so... Laid on, I laid on the bed. I had to be in a prop position. I can't lay flat on my back yet. Not until uh, Friday. Uh, so I'm laying in an incline position, propped up on pillows. Um, I started to feel better uh, within a few minutes, um, but my hands felt like this. They were just, they felt really shaky um, and everything. If I hadn't laid down, I probably would have hit the floor. So, um, I don't know what that was about. I don't know if, cause see, I have anxiety. So I don't, I don't know if that was anxiety. I don't know if I just was having uh, a little bit of a panic attack because it wasn't these, it wasn't the, you know, the changing of the strips on the side that was bothering me. It was, I guess I was freaking out of, okay, I see how this is and, and that's okay. It hurts a little bit, but you know, I can get through this. But then think about that same this same tape right here, this same tape is on my nipple area, going down my breast and underneath it. And it's on, you know, it's on the incisions. And when they were coming off of the nipple area, it is peeling scab, okay? It's peeling scab. And of course that's what caused the bleeding around the areola and is why it hurt so bad. And, and I have to do that every three days for three weeks. Um, so, but I, I started feeling better uh, and ate some crackers just to try to, you know, uh, help settle things. And I was like, okay, we're gonna try this again. I, I calmed down, uh, took a shower, uh, and Jaden had to help me with the tape, you know, taking the tape off and putting the tape back on because I just, it hurt so bad that I, I couldn't I couldn't do it myself. Someone else had to do it. Uh, my girls with their specific learning disabilities, they they just couldn't handle it. So my son had to do it, and and I'm thankful that he was able to help me with that because otherwise, me being in so much pain and trying to pull it off at the same time, I just wouldn't have ever uh, pulled it off. But I'm just praising Yahuwah that uh, that I didn't pass out. Um, so, like I said, again, you know, check out is tomorrow. 
uh, we do need help um, staying in, in the hotel. Uh, like I said, it's probably gonna take another two or three weeks before I'm recovered enough to be able to drive. And I know that it, I know a lot of people are struggling right now and I know a lot of people are hurting and I know it's asking a lot. I, I do understand that and I, and I appreciate every single one of you who has been helping us, you know, when you're able to, I appreciate it. Um, I really hate being a burden on everyone uh, and I, I hate constantly asking people uh, for help. I, I don't know what else to do. Uh, we don't know really anybody here who that we can stay with uh you know if, if we did and if we were able to stay with someone then we'd be doing that uh, but if you if you are able to help uh we have zelle venmo cash app paypal facebook pay uh, like i said three days in the hotel is 261 dollars plus taxes about 267 a week in the hotel is six uh, i think 643 plus tax about six um 648 uh so if anybody is able to help uh, we'd appreciate it like i said I, I i don't know i really don't know what else to do i do have to stay in the area uh, because my follow-up appointment, and I already mentioned this in my other video, but my follow-up appointment with Dr. Rankin is October 12th at 1.45 p.m. And that'll be my, uh, my one-month uh, post-explant uh, follow-up. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll make another video. I'll post that. Uh, just keeping everybody up to date. Uh, but... I, I just want to ask for your prayers. I mean, even if you're not able to, you know, to help out financially, just pray. Please pray and, and share this with, with anybody that, uh, that you know that may be able to help. Uh, if you don't know anyone, well, just, just share it. Just share it with as many people as you can. Uh, we just want to say thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Yahuwah Baruch you. Um, today is... Uh, the Feast of Trumpets, so get your shofars out and blow them. Uh, I couldn't blow mine today because, again, the sutures, so my children had to try to do it. Um, but one day I, I'm looking forward to the day that we're all together and we can, you know, we can celebrate the feast days uh, together and, and, um, and just fellowship and, and worship Yahuwah together. Shalom.